Corporate finance practice problem using one note. Warrants break even price. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, the Practice Problems tab. Then down in the 1913 Warrants Break Even Price tab. Also note, when using OneNote, take a look at the Immersive Reader. Our presentations will be down here in the text area as well with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we have our information up top, calculations on down below, looking at the warrants once again. Warrants giving the option, but not the obligation, to purchase the stock at a exercise price different than the price of the stock. So we're going to be calculating the break-even point, so the break-even price. We'll do that by calculating, looking at the break-even price formula itself, and then we'll also take a look at the intrinsic value of the warrant calculation and the speculation premium we looked at last time, which kind of relates to this break-even price. So you could use that, use your basically algebra to back in to the price if you wanted to think about it that way. You want to think about, remember, when you have multiple formulas that are kind of related, what you would like to do is think about how they are related so you can think about, you know, if you know one calculation, you could do the algebra to back into the other calculation instead of thinking about every calculation as if it's its own separate thing that you have to memorize in its own separate world. You you want things connected, not all in their own little world here. So this stuff all ties together. So we have the warrants here. We're going to say that the warrant allows the holder to purchase one share and the exercise price is going to be 16. So if you have one warrant, you can purchase one share at $16. The stock price is selling for $15. So note that the warrant is not even beneficial to you at this point in time because the exercise price is higher than the the, the stock price at this point. The warrant sells for $4. So obviously, if you were to just purchase the warrant and then exercise it right now, you would not be doing well because you'd have the $4 plus you'd have to pay the exercise price of the 16 and the price is only selling, the stock is only selling for 15 but note that once again, the warrants last some time. So if the stock is volatile going up and down, then you could have a situation where it'd be beneficial to be holding on to the warrant in case stock price goes up so that you have only invested the $4 instead of the stock price of the $15 so that uh, then you could possibly take advantage of it when the stock increases in value, the stock goes down in value, then you're only basically in for that $4 instead of the $15. So it kind of has that cap to your to the losses that we have there. So we'll calculate the break even point here, the break even price, where would the price have to be then, in other words, in order for us to basically break even on the purchase of the warrant and then the exercise of it. So the exercise price is going to be 16. That's how much we're going to exercise it for. And we're saying that the warrant divided by the number of shares can purchase. Now, in this case, it's just one share that we can purchase. So, so it's four divided by one. But, and that's often the case, but you could have a situation where this is more than one. So that, in other words, usually this formula will be just simply the exercise price of a warrant. And then you'll have the, the warrant uh, price, which will give you then the break even at the 20. But if you have a situation where this number here is more than one, like you purchase multiple shares, then... Uh, you'll have to divide the warrant price divided by that number. That's where it gets a little bit confusing. But of course, this formula makes sense because the break-even price would rep be represented by the exercise price of the warrant, meaning how much it's going to cost us to actually exercise and purchase the stock, plus how much it cost us to purchase the warrant. So we bought the warrant for $4. If it cost us $16 to exercise it to actually get the stock, we spent $20 that would be the break-even price. In other words, if the price was $20, then you got kind of that break-even point. The current price we're saying is $15, so we're not there at this point. Let's first calculate the, the intrinsic value and the uh, speculation premium the way we did in a prior presentation. We'll first do that using the stock price of the $16, and then we'll do it using our break-even price here of the $20. And then we'll think about, you know, just how you could use your algebra to kind of back into this if you didn't know the break-even price, but you knew these two calculations down below. 
So we have then the market value of the common stock. We're looking at this formula up here now. The intrinsic value equals the market price minus the exercise price of the warrant times uh, times N, which is the number of shares each warrant entitles the holder to purchase, which in this case is simply one. So it'll be a fairly basic formula. It's often one, that number. So the tricky thing here is the market price is only 15, whereas the exercise price is 16. So we actually have a negative difference here. We have the negative one. If you were to exercise it, you'd actually be exercising it for a price that's greater than the stock price. And the number of shares is just one here. So one warrant to one share. So one times negative one would be negative one. So our speculation premium of this warrant would be the warrant sells for $4. It costs $4 for the warrant. And we don't we have the intrinsic value of the warrant is actually negative in this case because the exercise price is higher than the stock price, which could well be the case. And so we're going to say that the four minus the negative one or plus one, in essence, is going to be the five at the speculation premium. Because if we were to exercise the warrant again, we'd have that negative benefit because the exercise price is higher than the, the market price. So let's see, okay, well, what would happen then if we plug into this formula the $20 which is our break-even price. What would we expect? We would expect the end results to be zero. So we're going to say, let's do that with our spec with our new $20. What happens if the market price goes to 20? Then we have the exercise price of the warrant is 16. The difference between the 20 and the 16 is four times the number of shares each warrant entitles, which we're going to say is one. And that's going to give us the intrinsic value of the warrant, which will be four. So then if we take that four for the warrant to purchase the warrant, and the intrinsic value is also for this time we have a benefit of course with the intrinsic value because the market price is higher than the exercise price what we can buy the stock for if we exercise the warrant and that is going to be our benefit which is the same value as the warrant which basically proves the price uh the price break even price here now note we we've calculated the break even with this formula up top which is fairly straightforward but if we if this number happened to be more than one, it gets a little bit more difficult. Notice that you can basically use you can use these formulas here to kind of use your algebra to back into the break even price, right? You could say, okay, and if you have this in Excel, then of course it's easier to do. We do do this in Excel. You can use the tool called Goal Seek to kind of figure that out. In other words, if you if you're saying this is the unknown, and and then you plug in your algebra, or else you use your equations up top for the intrinsic value and the speculation premium and you say 20 then is the unknown the unknown minus the exercise price would give us the this number here times one which is just one here because there's only one share and then we we know that uh, this number is going to be the intrinsic value uh the i'm sorry the warrant the warrant price and then the intrinsic value which we calculated over here if you take those two formulas and in essence then solve for the unknown factor which is 20 because the end result has to be zero of course then you can kind of back into it using your algebra and you can also do that like in excel if you plugged all this stuff in to this formula this calculation and this was the unknown you knew the end result to be zero you could you could basically back into that value using the break even analysis i mean sorry the, using the goal seek tool as well simply asking excel please set this cell to be zero by changing this cell which is connected by formulas to whatever it needs to be to make that cell zero and that's another way you can kind of back in to this type of calculation you could also you know basically set these equations to zero with the unknown at the market value let's do it again and uh, this time we'll, we'll change a couple things so new scenario we got the warrant, allow the holder to purchase two shares this time. That's going to be one of the major differences. The exercise price is going to be $30. The stock sells for $33. So the exercise price is starting out less than the stock price, but you still have to purchase the warrant for $16. So the break-even price, what would be the break-even price? It's a little bit more complicated now because you would think it's the exercise price and then it's the warrant price. So you got, you got to exercise it for the 30 meaning once I have the warrant to exercise the warrant, it costs me $30. But then there's two of them at this price to get two to, to get two shares. And the warrant price, uh, because there's two shares, we're going to divide it now 
by the number of shares that can be purchased. So the warrant price was 16 divided by the two. That's where we're going to get the eight here. And so that'll give us our 38 for the break even price. So if we do our calculations on down below in a similar fashion, as before, we will start off with the current price, which is the $33. And then we'll, we'll test the break even price, which we would expect the speculation premium to result at zero at that point. So we'll start off here with the 33. So we're going to say the intrinsic or minimum value is going to be the 33 market price minus the exercise price. So we're taking these numbers up top, the, the market price 33 minus the exercise price of 30 will then give us the difference of $3. That's going to be a benefit to us because of course the market price this time higher than the exercise price. Then we have two because we're, get, we're going to get two stocks for the warrant. So that going to multiply that times two and that then giving us the three times two or six. The intrinsic value then having the benefit of six. Now, if we calculate the speculation premium, then the warrants sell for $16. So they're selling for that 16 and we have the intrinsic value of, of the six. So we're going to be spending $16 and get a benefit of that six, which means we have the $10 speculation uh, premium of the $10. So if on the other, if at that point in time, we were to purchase these, the uh, warrant and exercise it right out for the, for the two shares in this case, we would lose the $10. But we're thinking that we can hold on to the warrant possibly until the stock price goes up. How high would it have to go up before we hit the break even price? Well, then we would go down. We're going to say, all right, uh, we're going to, we calculated it up top at the 38. Let's plug that back into this formula to see if we do indeed hit the break even, which should result in the speculation premium being zero. So we can then do this here. We're going to say, all right, the market value of the common stock is 38. And that instead, that's the break even price. The exercise price of the warrant is 30. The difference between the two is eight. And then we have our uh, number of shares each warrant entitles is two. That's going to give us 16 for the intrinsic value of the warrant. So if we take our warrant selling for $16 and compare that to the intrinsic value of 16, we do indeed get to our break even point being the speculation discount at zero at that point in time. So that's that's where we would uh, look to be. Also note that, again, you can kind of figure this out if you don't know the break even formula up top, but you know this calculation on down below or, you know, these two formulas up top, you could basically solve for the unknown which would be the market value of the common stock. Or if you have this in Excel, you could use basically the goal seek type of scenario to back into this 38, knowing that the end result, of course, has to be zero. That's the point of the break-even analysis. So you can kind of back into the unknown of the market value.